What's up everybody, welcome to the Amateur Coder channel. So today we're gonna to do the long awaited get X state management. So here's the app we're gonna build. I try to keep it very simple so we can get over all the core parts of the state management solution and understand exactly what it's doing. So this top part right here is gonna be using a get builder. This button over here is gonna be using OBX and get X. And on this screen, we're gonna demonstrate how the sum rebuilds whenever either of these counter rebuilds, as well as a lot of other stuff that this package includes and how to use it and everything. So let's get into it. So before we start, I wanted to make clear exactly what the different types of state management that GetX offers. So it offers reactive and on update state management solutions. So these two are the reactive state management. What does that mean? It means these are constantly listening to changes on whatever state they're looking at. And then we have on updates. So with Get Builder, this is similar to provider where you notify listeners you just call this update function and whenever that update function this get builder we will be rebuilt then there's also mix in builder which is if you want reactive and on update within the same widget so we're not going to go over it in this tutorial since it has a very specific use case you'll 99 percent of the time you'll be using get x obx and get builder so those are the differences for these two you listen to any changes on your observable object and for get builder you just rebuild whenever an update happens. So now let's get into the code. All right, so here's our starter code. There's nothing really here. We have a first screen with just a couple buttons and a floating action button. Doesn't really, doesn't do anything. And we're able to go to the second screen, which actually has nothing. We're gonna fill these screens as we go. And then we have one model called the user model. So we have the name and the count. Just a normal, regular Dart model, nothing fancy. So we're gonna first start with the Get Builder option because it's the simplest, it consumes the least amount of RAM, and it's just, it's the one you probably should use unless you want to have your, unless you need to have your app reactive. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a controllers folder. So the controllers are pretty much what will control your state of the application. And let's make our first one, the very simple, count controller so let's create our count controller class and we need it to extend get X controller and then inside we're just gonna have a simple count we're gonna initialize it to zero and we're gonna have a very simple function called increment and what we're gonna do increment the count and so now the last thing to make our get builder update, we need to call that update function that I talked about. And there we go, that's our whole controller for our get builder. So then we get to our first screen. What do you need to do first when you're using state? You need to inject it. So how do you do that? Final, our count controller state, call count controller equals get dot put count controller. So you could think of this as if you're putting or injecting your count controller into this variable. And then very simply, we get the get builder. And what type of the get builder? It's the count controller. And then we need a builder class where you return a text widget and display the count. So right, it's zero. Now we're not updating anything. That's because we don't have anything down here. But very simply, we have our count controller, increment, that's it. And there we go. We have state management in our application. So what's special about the Git Builder? You notice how we're injecting up here. Let's say we are only using it in the get builder. You can easily just do init and initialize your count controller here. And then you don't need this line at all. So whenever the first time this get builder is used, it will initialize the count controller. And if we reload it, we see we have a problem. Our count controller dot increment over here can't be found. Super simple. We do get dot find and we want to find the count controller. So the get builder, whenever it's initialized, will create a count controller and store it in RAM. 
And then this find looks through RAM, finds your count controller, and then increments it. So let's see if that works. Perfect. Very simple. So get builder, it doesn't get any more complicated than that. You just have to call the update and it'll update your get builder. And then inside you can display it. You have a lot of other properties. For example, you have dispose. Make sure to look through those if you need even more function. Now, one thing to note, if you're only using state management with get, you do not need to have a get material app. So if we save that and reload, you'll see this count value will still work. It works just as you want. So removing that get will make your app size a lot smaller and a little bit faster if that's what you're looking for. But you do need the get in order to switch screens. So that's the reason I had it there. All right, and there's really not too much to it with get builder. So let's get into the reactive side of things. So for the reactive part, we're going to be using our user model. We have the name and the count. And now we need to set up a new controller called the user controller because that's going to actually take care of the state. The model has no state. It's just a model, right? And But the user controller does. So we have class user controller extends get x controller and inside we're going to have a user state and it's going to be of type user and we want that to be observable so this is how you make your state observable what this does it wraps your user class inside an rx user and then you have properties like update retrieving the value things like that so we're going to have one function we're going to call it update user and we're going to pass it a count. So this current count value that we have. And then inside here, we'll be able to see all the things user does. So we have first rebuild, listen, map, stream, all those things. What we're going to do is update. So we're going to have the current value of that state and we can change value dot name. So our user name right there we'll just change it to my name and then value dot count which we will change to the count we passed in so now whenever this gets called it will update this user state but we don't need any update function here because it's already observable and whatever is listening to this will update automatically so if you remember from the beginning, there's two reactive solutions. Why do you need two? So OBX doesn't do anything except listen to it, but get X, you can have an init, dispose, as well as other things. So if you're really worried about RAM, you, you should use OBX whenever you can, but get X doesn't consume too much RAM. And if you want to initialize within the actual get X, then you can do that. So let's first show off how get X works. So we want, we want to observe the user controller that we created. And inside we have an init where we can initialize that user controller, just like we did with the get builder. And then we need a builder where we can return simple text. So our, our user is an RX user type, if you remember. So it's an observable type. So we want to get that user's value first. And then since it's a model that has multiple values, we want to get the name. And if we restart, you'll see the name. So this update name and stored count, that button is over here. And we're initializing the user controller in here. We could have done the put method since we're going to be using it in multiple places, but we can also just do get find then user controller dot update user and we'll just pass the count three for no so once we click on this you should see the name pop up now we didn't have to do any update or anything so now the second part is the count value we're going to do that with an obx so with obx you'll notice there's no init or anything it's just a builder 
So let's create that return. It's going to be very similar to the one up there. And then for this, we'll use get dot find and user controller again, dot user dot value dot count. And remember we put three in here, so it shows us three. So now to make it official, how we actually wanted it, we can do the same thing and find our count controller. And we can just pass the count to this. And then whenever we update, that will get updated as well. So in this specific case, instead of using get find in a lot of places for the user controller, I would probably just do a put at the top. So there we go. That's pretty much it. We have the get builder, get X and OBX all taken care of. Hopefully you understand the differences between each of them and when and why you should use them. Get builder rebuilds upon update. Get X and OBX re are reactive. So whenever this controller changes the state within the controller, it will update. Only difference is OBX doesn't have any init or any properties. So if you need a very lightweight solution, then go with this. Now, the second part of this, we're going to go into a little bit more advanced for observables. So we're going to go to the next screen for that. And we're going to add a new controller. We're going to call this the sum controller. So the sum controller is going to be pretty similar to our user controller, but it's going to have a couple special features. So we'll have two counts, count one equals zero and make it observable. And we'll also have, and we'll have a second count and then we'll have two functions to increment each of them. And then the one special thing we're going to do, so we do int get sum equals count one dot value plus count two dot value. And this sum will get rebuilt whenever one of these changes. Even though we're not listening to this directly, as long as one of these change, the sum will get updated. There's going to be more advanced things inside this controller that we're going to add, but for now, let's just display this. So our second, we're going to have column with three get X that rely on the sum controller. And at the top, we're going to make sure we create an instance of the sum controller. Then I'm going to add one for count two, one for sum, and then two buttons. So I'll be back after that. So here we have our three get X and I added a little decoration with a couple of text files, but we have the count two and then sum then two buttons at the bottom. So some controller that increment the first one and then some controller increment the second one. So hopefully we'll see these works. And there's a reason I put all these count two rebuild and count one rebuild. You can see them pop up down here. You'll see all three rebuild. If we increment the first one, see count one and some rebuild. And this we increment count two and sum rebuild. So sum, even though it's not observable itself, relies on two observable objects and it'll always rebuild. All right, so last little feature that I think is pretty powerful. So in your actual controller, you have these things called workers. The workers you can put in the init function. And what these workers do, I think is super powerful. So we have four that we're gonna go over. So we have ever. And we're going to listen to count one. And we're, all we're going to do is just print. And we'll say count one has been changed. And then we're going to have three more. So we'll have once. And this will be the first time count one is changed. Then we have debounce, which fires when count one hasn't been changed for one second. And for this one, we need to add a time. So duration seconds one. And then this one, interval, every one second count one is changed. This also needs a time. So now we'll go over what each of these workers does because these are very powerful in my opinion. So let's increment counter one. 
we should see these two show up because this shows up every single time count one is changed and this shows up the very first time ready there we go first time it changed and then one second later count one hasn't been changed for one second and interval every one second count one is changed so these two are the even more powerful ones this debounce one let's say someone is mashing the button right let's say you'll see i'm going to mash this button a bunch of times and this one will only pop up after the one second after the last time i i mash it so you see it's changing and then when i stop there we go count one hasn't been changed for one second so let's pretend a user is doing what i'm doing you're just clicking the button a bunch of times and you want to upload this count to the server you don't want to be doing it after every single time it has changed you want to do it after they relax for a little bit and give it at least one second so this way we're, you'll save a lot of time writing and reading from the database or any other reason you would need to debounce then there's also interval let's say you're doing your users doing the same thing where they're mashing the button a bunch but maybe it'll never really stop but you don't want to do it 20 times you would rather just do it once every second so your your things are updated but you're not reading and writing to the database that much i know i'm, I'm only going over like the database uses but i know there's a lot of uses where this comes in handy for example some ddos stuff with debounce so yeah, that's pretty much it for GetX. Hopefully I covered all the basics that will get you started. In my opinion, this is all pretty simple to use. You just need to figure out whether you need to be reactive or, or not. If you don't, then you should probably just use Git Builder. There's one more quick thing that I want to show you. It's not really necessary, but instead of doing this final sum control or sum control, you can just extend Git Widget and then our sum controller. Then we need to make sure to update these to controller. Then once we restart, everything should work the same. So what this get widget does, if you go into it, it basically creates an instance if you don't have one. If you do, it finds it and then returns it to, uh, to a controller variable. And then you can just use that. So that's a little bit cleaner. But yeah, that's it for get X and state management. I think it's pretty simple to use. I think I'm gonna be using it for my next project. But anyways, hope you enjoyed. Hopefully I broke it down enough to make it easy for you to understand. And that's it. So this code will be on GitHub. If you have any questions or anything, make sure to leave it in the comments. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share the video if it helped you. And thanks for watching.